The NFL trade deadline is here today for the Denver Broncos, 2 o'clock p.m. Mountain Time. Will the Broncos make any moves? What are Sean Payton's thoughts? Well, we'll dive deeper to that, plus your Broncos country mailbag questions on today's brand new installment of GMB. Good morning, Broncos country. Welcome into another episode of Good Morning Broncos, brought to you by friends over there at Superbook Sports. This is your daily Broncos morning conversation with a cup of coffee or your breakfast as we break down what's going on in Dove Valley with this team every single weekday, Monday through Friday at 9 o'clock a.m. Mountain Time here on Mile High Sports' official YouTube page. Mile High Sports is every team, every day. You get Broncos coverage, you get Denver Nuggets coverage, you get Colorado Avalanche coverage, anything that's going on with Colorado Sports, Mile High Sports should be your go-to hub, so do us a favor, hit that subscribe button down below so you never miss out on all the conversation as to what's going on with your favorite Colorado sports teams. I'm Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter for Mile High Sports. And make sure in the meantime, folks, you go check out milehighsports.com for all the up-to-date information, mailbags, Q&As, analysis, recaps, practice reports, game recaps, everything that you can get all in one place for every Colorado sports team, Mile High Sports. Dot com there. Hey, today's a big day in the NFL. I think for Broncos fans, they're a little anxious about maybe how today may go. Well, what is today? Today is the NFL trade deadline. As I mentioned at the top of the show, 2 o'clock p.m. Mountain Time. That's the deadline here. So we're waiting to see. We're on our toes all day long waiting to figure out, okay, are the Broncos going to make any moves? Are they going to maybe look at trading somebody? Are they going to maybe look at trading for somebody? I mean, everything is on the table until that 2 o'clock p.m. deadline comes to pass. And you know, I think we're all sitting here wondering, what is Denver going to do? And certainly, I think there are a lot of questions about maybe what direction the team is going to go, especially after their win on Sunday against the Chiefs. So we'll get into that. Obviously, we heard from Broncos head coach Sean Payton on Monday morning on our conference call with him. He gave us some insight into maybe his process, what he's going to do for the bye week, what he's going to have the players and his coaching staff do for the bye week. And then what the schedule looks like as they get ready to come out for that Monday night football game against the Buffalo Bills here in just a little bit of time, about 14 days from now. So, yeah, some some good time here for Denver to rest and recoup here. Uh, so let's get into it. Let's talk about what Sean Payton said on his Monday morning conference call with us, local media, following the aftermath of the Sunday's victory against the Kansas City Chiefs. And so much of a general takeaways to start off. Sean Payton talked about how important it has been. Like when you look at teams that are contenders, they run the football really well, and he made note of the 49ers last year, the Philadelphia Eagles last year, Kansas City. He even mentioned them last year as a team that was able to run the football effectively well, and that needs to be in the Broncos' DNA. And so far in the last two weeks against Green Bay, where Denver ran for, as a team, over 145 yards, and then this past week, 153 yards against Kansas City, who, folks, by the way, Kansas City was the number two ranked defense in the NFL coming into this matchup. And Denver found ways to capitalize, and obviously their defense made life very difficult for Patrick Mahomes, which, you know, if your defense is getting the ball for you and the offense is putting up some points, like that helps. Russell Wilson with three touchdowns, as we talked about there. But what is the approach here for Denver at the bye week? And I think so much of it, to me, when you're looking at it from a coach's perspective, getting it from Sean, one thing he said to us is, he said, you know, all these years, like, you know, I called Andy Reid one year at the – right before the bye week. And I was talking about, you know, Andy, what do you do? And apparently Andy Reid for the bye week, what he does, he gets the coaches, he gets the players out of the building for a week, and they come back the next week for game prep. Like it's good sometimes to hit pause, get a mental break, a mental refresher, re-energize your batteries, and then come back for the second half of the season. And that's why, honestly, I love the fact that Denver's bye week is kind of at the halfway point of the year, which just means, okay, hey, you made it through the first stretch of the schedule. Things didn't go necessarily how you wanted to. Ideally, you'd like to be sitting here at five and two versus, you know, three and five, whatever it may be at this point. Denver has a lot of things that I think got away from them in that first half of the season. There's things we'll talk about here on GMB as we go forth going into next week, maybe reviewing the first part part of the season here for Denver. But Sean Payton, the plan is to get the coaches and the players out of the building this week, have them have that little bit of a reset and that refresh, which is fine. I think you need that. And then come back next week ready to attack. And and I think there's going to be a lot of self-reflection now for Sean. Sean's not going to go to Cabo. He's not going to press pause. Sean's going to get out of the building, but he's going to be watching a lot of film. Like Sean is just wired a little bit differently, and he's going to come into the second half of the season with, I think, a good plan in place here 
for this Broncos team. So that's his approach to the bye week, which I think is good. Uh, some people may disagree with that, but look, it's a grueling, like 18 weeks, not to mention everything that you get from the preseason training camp. Like that is a grueling stretch from the start of training camp to the end of the season. It is brutal. It is mentally taxing. And so it's good for guys to step out and get a break. And I feel bad for the teams that had to have their bye week in like week four, week five. It's just doesn't seem right. Doesn't seem right because now their second half schedule is crazy going forth. And there's some teams that have like a later bye. I think in the next couple of weeks, there are going to be teams that still have bye weeks. And so, you know, it's a little bit of a, a late break for them, but also good timing for some of the teams that are in the postseason conversation to maybe get a bye at like week 12, week 13. We'll see how things pan out for them. But that's what Sean Payton's mindset is. That's what his approach is to the bye week. And look, obviously we talked to him about the NFL trade deadline and, and got his thoughts on it. And he was very, very clear. And I think he's always been very clear on this regard. And I think this dates back to the trade rumors we saw with Cortland Sutton, with Jerry Judy back in the offseason. He said, hey, we're not looking to trade to any of our guys. And, and kind of the same tone here for Sean, even a few weeks ago when Denver was one and four, his his vibe was, is, no, we're, we're going to do this with the guys that we have in our locker room. We have a vision for them this year. We have a vision for them going into next year. And I'm very curious to see what that vision is. And one thing he told us, he said that we're not remotely or even openly shopping any of our players. He said, usually it's, you know, teams are going to call. Like, this is the time of year where teams, they want to call. Like, if you're not winning, you don't have a good record at the trade deadline. Teams call and they ask. And he says, professionally, we have to pick up the phone. He said, but the idea is we're not looking to trade any of our players here. And I believe him. I, I really do. And I, I, I think when you talk about the idea of being sellers, that's where everybody has those mindset like, okay, hey, Denver's looking to trade everybody. You look at what Diana Rossini of The Athletic said. She's got really close ties to Sean Payton and some people in the Broncos front office. She's reiterated that Denver is not having a fire sell. And that, that was never the intention, even when they were one and four. They were not having a fire sell here for Denver going forward. So I, I know a lot of teams are going to call and they're like, oh, you know, we want Justin Simmons. We want Patrick Sertan. Denver is not looking to part ways with any of those guys. Sean Payton loves Patrick Sertan. I don't know how many times I have to reiterate it, but some people are like, oh yeah, trade Sertan for this, this, this. Denver's not trading Sertan. Sean Payton doesn't want to trade Sertan. I would be like, it would be shocking. Like if that were to happen, it would be earth shatteringly shocking at that point. Justin Simmons isn't going anywhere. I think honestly, Denver may look to extend Justin Simmons in the next you know year or so, maybe even this season, give him a two year, three year extension. It's, it's, I think it's on the table here for Denver. So. The idea of a fire sale, I, you know, the Broncos don't seem to be invested in that. They're carrying out. Look, they got a lot of young guys playing right now. They got a lot of guys stepping up into roles, and those guys are performing well. Like Denver's made some drastic changes over the course of the last few weeks, and we're seeing it pay off. So to me, it's like, all right, stay the course with it, right? If this is what Sean Payton's vision is, he is a coach. He's going to stay the course. He's already made the changes. They've traded Randy Gregory. They got rid of Frank Clark. They released a saying Bassey on the defensive side of the ball. They've made some lineup changes here and there. To me, that tells me everything I need to know about maybe where Sean's mindset is going forward here for this Broncos team. So we'll see. Obviously, 2 o'clock p.m. Mountain Time is the deadline to follow. We'll obviously, have it covered here on Good Morning Broncos. But if you want up-to-date information, make sure you stay tuned over there at Mile High Sports here. But Broncos country, one thing we do have coming your way here today is your mailbag questions. We had a few people send in some mailbag questions pertaining to the NFL trade deadline. We're going to answer them here on this morning's installment of GMB. Real quick, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's episode of the show. It's our good friends over there at Superbook Sports. Win a trip to the biggest football game of the year, courtesy of Superbook Sports. Superbook, they will fly you and a friend to Las Vegas for February's championship game. They will also give you two tickets to the game, plus a three-night hotel stay. And all you have to do is place a $25 same-game parlay between now and January 7th, and you're automatically entered to win. So wager and win a super trip to Las Vegas courtesy of Superbook Sports. Visit Superbook.com for terms and conditions. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. All right, let's continue on this morning's installment of Good Morning Broncos. Once again, Broncos country, just want to say thank you so much for making us part of your morning routine with a cup of coffee. You know me, I'm a coffee guy. I like to sip my coffee. I like to talk Broncos, and I like to engage with all of you. Thank you so much for all the support. And also, like I said, if you're a Colorado sports fan, you're just now stumbling onto this YouTube page. Subscribe so you never miss out on what's going on. We have the Pick, Axe, and Roll podcast hosted by Ryan Blackburn covering the Denver Nuggets. They're coming off of a victory last night against the Utah Jazz, and Denver's the only undefeated team remaining right now in the association. And we'll see you know, maybe some reaction to the trade that you saw inside the Western Conference with James Harden heading over to the Los Angeles Clippers. 
from the Philadelphia 76ers. Ryan does a great job of sharing maybe how it impacts the Denver Nuggets, how it impacts the Western Conference. Make sure you check out his work, milehighsports.com here. But Broncos country, let's open things up here. Let's get into the mailbag here. Got several questions from some fans, and we always appreciate it. And like I said, every single week we'll do a mailbag series. And if you ever want to get involved, all you have to do is leave your mailbag question down in the comment down below. We'll save it for next week. Or if you stay tuned on social media, I always put out a tweet at Cody Rourke NFL. And I'm also on threads at Cody Rourke NFL as well if you're there. But first question comes in from Dave. He asked the question, will the Broncos be sellers or buyers at today's NFL trade deadline? Now, now I think there's a, a lot of things you have to weigh here, right, in terms of where the organization is at. I think the number one thing a lot of teams are going to look at is, okay, who, who do you have on expiring contracts that maybe you could trade and offset a little bit of that impact, create some financial flow, whatever it may be, get some draft capital for I think that's where a lot of people are thinking about what Denver could do here. Um, will they be sellers or will they be buyers? Now, I think this also kind of goes into the second question that we also got, and it's from Jacob. He asked me the question, what do you think the Broncos should do at the NFL trade deadline? So I think ideally I'm going to answer both of these questions in one, so I appreciate you, Jacob and Dave, for your questions. I don't think that the Broncos will be sellers at the NFL trade deadline. I don't think that... You know, for me personally, I just don't see them making a move right now. You know, I think a lot of people have talked about Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy. Cortland is balling right now in Sean Payton's offense. Sean Payton values what he can do, and he's not going to offset one of his bigger targets, especially considering Denver doesn't have any threat in the tight end position right now to be able to impact or, you know, have like zero targets, zero receptions in the passing game this past Sunday. The Broncos' tight ends. It, it's weird. Cortland Sutton is a guy, obviously, a big play guy. We saw a massive defender. His size is just too valuable, and I think he's going to be part of Sean Payton's plan going forward here. Now, Jerry Judy, a lot of people are talking about him as well. Is he going to be traded? I, at this point, I don't think that the Broncos are going to make a move. I think that they're going to proceed forward. Denver obviously picked up his fifth-year option earlier this offseason, so I would be shocked if Denver made any move. Now, I think some other names, some other players' names have been floated out there. Some people have mentioned Josie Jewell, obviously in the final year of his deal in Denver, but right now he and Alex Singleton of the defense, they are big reasons why they're playing very, very consistent right now across the board. I don't think that Sean Payton, who wants to win, and, and that's what I have to reiterate, Sean Payton wants to win. I don't think he's going to offset a guy like Josie Jewell, now, even though he's on a one-year deal. I mean, Josie could even play himself into an extension because you need good players. You need good linebackers in today's NFL. And look, you got Drew Sanders on a rookie contract. He may not be ready to step into that role just yet. And, and that's okay. Like, There's nothing wrong with that. He's going to need more development. Look, I like that Denver's going with a little bit of that 4-3 look from time to time against some of the heavier run packages, personnel looks that some teams are bringing out there. I, I like that, and I think that that's a good move there by Denver to be able to do that. You get him on the field. He's also playing special teams, obviously getting some reps there. But for me, I don't think that Denver sells at the NFL trade deadline. If Denver makes a move here today, I could see them maybe making one trade. But here's the deal, right? You don't trade your first-round pick. You don't have a second round pick in this year's NFL draft, and you certainly don't trade this year's third round pick that you have. So what can Denver do? Can Denver maybe acquire a guy for a, like a fourth, fifth, or a sixth round pick? I think that's certainly in the in the works here. You've definitely seen that with some other players that have some high profile names. And look, I I like to mention it because I think there's always something in the water there. And Sean Payton, if he believes it's going to help him, he's going to probably pick up the phone. I would not be shocked if the Broncos inquired about Taysom Hill from the New Orleans Saints. We'll see there. Obviously, Denver has a void right now at the tight end position. They're not getting production there. Taysom can play tight end. He can play that hybrid wing that, you know, you, Greg Dulcich, the idea that you wanted to see him do this season, but he can't do it because he's hurt. He could be that. And also, he'll be in the backfield at times in situations with Russell Wilson and Javante Williams. Like, Denver could get very creative. They could go with a three-back pistol look if they wanted to with Taysom Hill. I think he just adds a dynamic to them that, they maybe don't have right now at tight end. And I think that could be his role at tight end and also in the run game and also an underrated guy out of the backfield. How might that help a guy like Russell Wilson? I think it's very valid there. Would not be shocked to see if the Broncos do pick up the phone and maybe inquire about Taysom Hill. So maybe something to keep an eye on there. But yeah, that's an interesting question. Like, for, I, I just don't think that based, even on this win, I don't think that Denver's going to do anything that's going to be drastically big in terms of changes i think they've made a lot of internal changes from a personnel standpoint well from the time that they were struggling and now they're actually playing better football so 
I like to see that. I think Denver's in a good spot right now. That is certainly heading in the direction that Sean Payton wants them to. And can they maybe flip the switch here, right? That's a great question. Our final question comes in from Leo. Leo asked the question, does the Broncos win against the Chiefs on Sunday? Change your perspective on how the team should proceed with the rest of the season. To quote Herm Edwards, you play to win the game, right? And I know there are a lot of fans out there. There's some fans out there, not a lot, but there are some fans out there, and they're very vocal that they're not happy that the Broncos beat the Chiefs. I, I think ideally for most fans, even if Denver loses a good portion of their games this season, I think that they'll feel good at the fact that, hey, Denver finally beat the Chiefs, right? Coming into the season, I asked a lot of Broncos fans what they would like to see, and they said, well, we'd like to see the, the streak against KC ended. Denver did it. They did it in convincing fashion. And look, it was a big win. And it was the type of win that could maybe change your trajectory for the rest of the year. I know Sean Payton's approach isn't changing. He's going to go out there. These guys in the locker room, contrary to what many people believe, like these guys are tuning out all the outside noise from all of us in the media. They're tuning out the noise from the fan base that's being overly negative and toxic. And they're just focused on playing for one another. And I, I like the coach in me, as cliche as it may sound, like I love that. And I value that because I think that's so important in today's world where everyone talks about, okay, well, if you're losing, well, just tank, go out there and intentionally lose. Like the idea that you're going to ask pro athletes or any athlete in general to go out there and just don't do your best. Just try to lose the game. Like that to me is just so wild. I've never understood the concept of it. But um, I do think that the Broncos win against the Chiefs, you know, changes my perspective in a sense that I think that Denver's and Sean Payton, they're going to proceed forward with the vision that they've had overall for this football team and i'm excited to see how it pans out i think when you look at the schedule and and obviously there's some circumstantial changes we'll see what goes on with the buffalo bills they've had their own variety of ups and downs this season denver's going to be well rested coming off the bye against them on that monday night football game and then they have the minnesota vikings where are they going to do a quarterback now that kirk cousins is out for the year with the torn achilles cleveland has their own issues like deshaun watson not playing they have a really good defense but you know, Denver, I think, matches up well with their defense against that that Browns offense. And so Denver has a chance to go on a little bit of a run potentially in the second half stretch of the schedule. But, you know, for me as a coach, I'm going to say to the players, like take it one week at a time. Don't worry about three weeks from now. Right now, the Broncos, they have to beat the bye week. Go enjoy your time off. You've earned it. And then come back for the week of the Buffalo Bills game ready to rock and roll because it's the second half schedule. It's going to be a second half push here. For the Broncos. But with that said, Broncos country, that'll wrap up today's episode of Good Morning Broncos. We'll have you covered on tomorrow's episode of GMB with all the recap of what's going on with the NFL trade deadline. Did the Broncos make any moves? What did teams around the AFC West do? What did teams in the AFC do from a trade standpoint? We'll recap all that on tomorrow's brand new episode of GMB. And then we'll be off on Thursday and Friday. No show on those days. It's the bye week. I'm going to take those days off, and then we'll be back, obviously, next Monday. So we'll have you covered tomorrow, then we're off for a couple of days, and we'll be back next week here on GMB.